Let Technical me. testicles while it's in watch. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So let's just uh, let's keep our fingers crossed on this one that uh, things go right. <laughs> Although I will say, I don't know about you guys. Did you guys actually post any commentary for WrestleMania? Because no. I did on TikTok. I didn't, but I was on a different. Uh, I was on the WrestleMania oh. podcast. Um, I was on the Nerd Badge podcast, and we did Mania talk. You were on another podcast, you cheating bastard, you bitch. <laughs> It was a last. It was a last minute thing. Somebody bailed, and he put it off. I was like, "I'll do it." So we did the Wednesday. May I again? We did the Wednesday, that and then we did <laughs> did the Wednesday. You son last of Monday. a bitch! <laughs> you know, you cheater. Huh? Hey, <laughs> production value, man. They actually had a studio. They had a studio. I actually did better sound quality. Fuck <laughs> you. Uh, anyway, that's. Start off the show. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Dragoon's Lair podcast. I am the Blue Dragoon himself, Daniel the Dragon. And with me once again, as per usual, is this cheating bastard, King Hamster Pellet himself, Mike Bitch. Schiavo. And once again, we're the returning family man himself, James Ains. What's up, everybody? All right, guys. So, I mean, we had a very... We, we didn't have all of the WrestleMania card when we started last our last episode, so we did our bonus episode, and we had most of the matches. Most of the matches. We didn't have anything, but it was an amazing WrestleMania two-night event. Night two was better than night one. Yeah, but, I mean, we've had a lot of things that have also happened throughout the course of the week, and one very big bit of exciting news... No, not O.J. Simpson dying. I was you to say that. I was waiting no, for that. actually, actually, the big news was that we are getting an R-rated live action, the last Ronin Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Turtle you know what? Bitches. Andre sent me that. That is going to be an R-rated. He, just, he didn't say the last Ronin. Yeah, he it's the an R-rated Turtles film. I'm like yep. R-rated Turtle film. I go that would be interesting. Yeah, it's, and now it makes sense. Yeah, it's Ronin. the last Ronin. So that is something to definitely be excited about. And when can we expect that? Uh, l- l- yeah, probably. Okay. But it's still just knowing that we'll get a mature rated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that's based on the last Ronin comic. Mm-hmm. If that is one of the darkest yes. comics that they've come out with for Ninja Turtles. Well, and the, the Turtles have been dark. Yeah, yeah. yeah, when Ninja Turtles first came yeah. out, they were dark. dark. And I, oh, yeah. I thought they were kind of like going back to their roots, like do like an origin again, but darker, more, yeah. more true to the comic. Well, this is as dark as it's gonna yeah. get. Yeah. I mean, it's a Ninja Turtles movie and only now, one turtle. Let's bring people up to speed. Who is the last Ronin in Ninja Turtle lore? Well, I don't really want to ruin it for people, but Dunk. it. And I don't want to ruin it for anyone, really. Yeah. If they haven't read the comics, which they can go out and they can go to their local comic shop, pick it up, or just watch a YouTube video of one of the comics guys explaining it. But the basic gist is the turtles were almost all of them were wiped out. Only one of them is left. And Even one Splint is dead. Yeah. One, the biggest mystery was which turtle is it? Because they're using all all of their brother's weapons. Right. So it's one turtle using all four different turtle weapons. So it basically is a very dark revenge story. And I'm not spoiling anything, even though I know who the Ronin is. This is, you figure, they have no leader. Right. There, it's a man without a nation. That That's the Ronin itself. It's a samurai with no like now, is they the got foot no one still around is it, is like i don't main antagonist i don't think it? it's the foot i is it shredder n- no this is like it's long since passed okay. this is like i think one of shredder's like ancestors or kids or something it's just it's a it's a dark story okay. so the fact that we're getting an r-rated like ninja turtles movie was something you know, I don't think anyone ever thought no. would be a possibility. Especially now with all the cartoons and everything. I mean, when it first came out, it was on the, it kind of flew under the radar. Yeah. Like the comic book kind of flew under the radar. Once it got picked up and became a kid's cartoon, that's when it took off. Yeah. And even and, the live action first movie. Yeah, the first was, movie was fine. It was 
pretty intense. It was intense, but it wasn't dark. But because Jim Henson didn't like the violence. That was Jim Henson who did he, all that? He yeah. did, he did all, shop? yeah, the, his creature shop did it. He didn't like the violence, so the second Ninja Turtle movie, if you notice, they don't use their weapons. Really? Donatello may be the only one because it's a staff, mm -hmm. but Michelangelo. I remember in the beginning when they pulled it, he he hit somebody with a. a yeah, he's salami. using Link's sal salamis. Salami. It's yeah. like it really was. They use a yo-yo. Yeah, they wanted to cut back on the weapon violence. What they hmm. also use vanilla ice. That's what kind of weapon violence is that? That was assault to your ears. Yeah, well, exactly. Um, go ninja, go ninja. You go. know what? Don't I, you dare freak up no, that no. song. It's. It was a catchy it was a soon. Cute. It, it was, really was. Even was. Pizza Hut picked up on it. Uh, well, listen, Pizza Hut picked up even from the first movie yeah. because, let's face it, there, the marketing was out of control. Yeah, mm -hmm. but even the funny, they picked up on it, but even if yeah. you look at it, they referenced Domino's like, hey, you were a half hour late. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but the whole thing was it was a really a Pizza yeah. Hut thing. So Wasn't Ninja Turtles 2 uh, Kevin Nash's first foray into film? Yes. Yeah. Super yeah, where we see him as Super Shredder, yeah. with you really don't see him, mm. but that menacing feature before then, you know, he starts before popping up in things. Before he started blowing out his quad. Just so, so mm. side note to everybody, if they get to read the book, The Last Ronin, Ninja Turtles, introduction by Robert Rodriguez. Do we have a director on this, or everything is still in flux? Um, I, I think the director is, it's supposed to be like sort of John Wick style, so I think it's going in like the direction of like, I think the guy who did John Wick 4. Okay, cool. Didn't he also, he was also, uh, if it's not the guy who directed John Wick 4, one of the first ones, he was also, um, I think, stunt coordinator on The Crow with Brandon Lee. That's a possibility. That, no, I'm you know, saying one. Uh, I I don't I don't know off the top of yeah. my head. No, I know I, Jimmy's looking it up right I now. Interview so. with about Brandon Lee, and they said that the guy who I think was a stunt coordinator. Yeah. He went off and he ended up directing one of the John Wick films, and he even, the director even said, "I because I wanted yeah if Brandon was alive because he would have been the perfect choice." Oh yeah, you know I mean Keanu. Keanu is, is not taking anything away. No, Keanu's proven his metal. Yes. Like, but Brandon Lee would have been, been the he would have been the prime choice, mm -hmm. but you know, unfortunately cut too short. Yes. Uh, you know. Listen, um, yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna make fun of OJ Simpson too no. much because you know no. it, there's too much tragedy there. And um yeah, I'd like Did to leave him, him in the past. Stileski? No. He was one of the. He was. He had something to do with. He, maybe he's a producer he did the or something. Wolverines. He did the stunt. Man of Tai Chi. He did the stunt. After Earth. He did the stunt. Expendables too. He, well, one Save. of the guys. He, he yeah. worked with, on the Crow, and then he he's something in the, um, in the John Wick. He's a producer or a director or something like that. Yeah, oh, it, maybe right. I don't even know. Yeah, what. but no. Yeah. It, so it's going, and the the fact that we're getting a last Ronin film. The trailer drop, though, also for the Joker part I deux. saw that. I was like, what am I watching? Uh, you know what? And, like, listen, I enjoyed watching the first Joker movie mm -hmm. after it was available on streaming. Yeah. I, like, everyone's thoughts about how dark it was in the theaters and everything, it just didn't seem like something I wanted to see. Like, I wasn't running to the theater for. Mm -hmm. And... The fact that this is we're we're in a time where they're trying to bring back the musical, because I mean, bring back the musical, fine, bring back the musical. But how the hell you turn the Joker into a musical? Well, let's see. We got uh, Joaquin oh, Phoenix who can sing. Yeah, I'm not yeah. taking anything away from their talent. I'm just saying, nah. how are you turning it into a musical? Well, the, remember the Joker's the first movie was an entire fever dream anyway. So I mean, it's pretty much going to be. This is an insane asylum. Is it Arkham? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, they're going to be in Arkham. Are they saying Arkham? Or are they just saying an insane asylum? I don't know. That's the thing. This is like such an alternate timeline, different universe, multiverse. I'm amazed that this didn't get canceled no, when DC was... No, they an Yeah. Of course it's an else world, but they really... It's like they canceled other things, but this gets to keep going. This didn't get canceled. The Batman didn't get canceled. And uh, Teen Titans go. Didn't get canceled. See, now Teen Titans Go should have been canceled yes. years ago. Yes. I will give them credit that the um, multiverse movie that they did, where they had Teen Titans Go versus Teen, Teen Titans, Titans, that was actually entertaining. But I can't 
I can't get behind it. I understand it's more for little kids, yeah. but yeah. at the same time, it's the cheesy animation. I will say the cast that because they all came back from Teen Titans, mm -hmm. it's an amazing cast. The chemistry between all of them is phenomenal. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. I will listen to Tara Strong in almost anything. I just won't watch My Little Pony because I'm not yeah. a brony. No. But it's one of those things where... He's a jabroni. Yeah. No. <laughs> just to so, catch up on what we were saying. Here we go. Chad Stolesky, he was the stuntman in one of the stuntmen in The Crow mm -hmm. under the name of Chad Sterlison. Okay. So there you yeah. go. Random, fa random trivia fact for you folks. Brought to you by Mike himself no actually that was more brought to you because you were the one going and actually looking shit up the two of us we were having a conversation and oh, you just yes. you start deep diving now <laughs> can't complain Hello, i am jacques Cousteau and i am deep diving information and i am db oh jesus fucking christ Oh, uh, so let's dive into wrestlemania yeah big one? Yes. yeah let's talk about wrestlemania and night one Okay. Okay. Now the first match, I'm so glad that the first match was the Rhea. women's world was, championship match, Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch. I was shocked they opened with that match. I'm glad they did, yeah. especially after they made the announcement that Becky Lynch had been strep. dealing with strep throat and a fever. fever. Yeah. So And she still put on a hell of yeah. a show. Oh yeah. Both of them did. You wouldn't have even thought she no. was sick, but no. the fact that it was freezing cold out there. Yep. 50, mm, yeah, how many That was in four, that was in the forties. Well, I knew yeah. people who went to the shows and they were saying like above the ring itself they had heaters like blowing down onto the ring so they're not so the performers aren't freezing their asses off. But when the wind starts blowing that really doesn't make too much of a difference. Yeah, there's no cover. It's not yeah. indoors. Yeah. And it's near the water also. Yes. So yeah. You're in really deep shit. So you're just asking for, asking for to freeze. Moon, yeah. Yeah. So the fact that Becky put on that great of a performance, mm -hmm. but I called it that it was going to be Rhea's night. Rhea yeah. was walking away. I th I had the other I went I had it going the other way I had Same. Becky going over give Rhea time off to heal up from whatever injuries she might have because she even said she's has she has some ailments I figured Mania perfect time end of story start a new story yeah but listen she's done she, she does a hell of a show she put on a hell of a show and Rhea is probably one of the funniest talents I've yeah. seen. Because not only can be, she be so serious, mm -hmm. but then there's footage of her at like signings and questions mm -hmm. where it's like she's sitting there and talk and like mocking Cody Rhodes' song. Mm -hmm. It's like adrenaline in my soul. Oh my God, it's Cody Rhodes. Yeah. It's like. And then she, she'll play around with kids in the crowd. Yeah. So it's like she is. She's not a heel. She's not a baby face. No. She's it, in between her. Yeah, yeah. And it's like. I think eventually any heel who who get who, who gets over will eventually become a face. Yeah. Perfect yeah. example, MJF. Oh yeah. Yeah. He he started out everybody hated him, but then little by little people were like, "Hey, this guy can go." He cuts great promos. So whenever he did it, he he started going over. He even said to Jericho, "He's always been over since his MLW yeah. days since I met even met him in um that's Russell a little Khan blurry. About five years ago, he's got that arrogant, he does. Rick Flairish attitude with the Alberto Del Rio. Alberto no, let's Rio not song. let's not talk about Del Rio in any sense mm -hmm. of the word. I don't. I know. Ever want to hear anything about that jackass? I know. He, but he has. Was MJF? He. Yeah. I. I saw an interview where he talking with Jericho, and he was like, "And Jericho, like, eventually you be a face." And he goes, "I don't want to be a face." And you Jericho have no goes, choice. It's, it's, that's right. He goes, it's not up to you. It's whatever the crowd wants. And eventually yeah. you saw yeah, you he can, became a face. You can still be the biggest jackass and the crowd will still well, get behind you. You. Yeah. you can come out and flip everybody off and say everybody sucks. I'm like, yeah! Th yeah. That was Austin for some of yeah. the longest time. Yeah. Like yeah. Even The Rock. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, he was still doing it now with, back as the final boss. Mm. <laughs> we'll get to that later. That was, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a whole different scenario. So... I, I knew that it was going to be Rhea's night, and that mm -hmm. that match had some amazing spots. Yep. And the fact that yep. Becky was sick. As a dog. Yeah. yeah. Put on a true clinic. Mm -hmm. the like bo The both of them even coming down to the ring. How they brought them into the ring was... Yeah. Even, I mean, the having her come out of her book. 
<laughs> and even oh, the yeah. book is on her yeah. fights and all. Yes. Yeah, so cool. Oh, and then the band performing. Oh, that was yep. sick. She, you know, Rhea, Rhea was. She went ballistic. Oh yeah, yeah. Rhea was on fire. And he looked. If you notice, you look at it and it makes you laugh, chuckle. Who was Rhea at the moment? Because the lead singer almost would. Looks like, yeah. 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 Listen, it, it all. listen she did a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. The band was yeah. awesome. They, it really hyped the crowd up. Yes, it did. And to open up as That's the bad. first match, they needed this was big. definitely mm -hmm. the biggest match that they could do. And I'm so glad they got that one in the books as their first. I think that was a highlight of night one. It was it was one of one of because I gotta say because what was what was match two the ladder match yeah and you called it that they were splitting the titles yeah they, which is good we didn't have the full card when we were doing our predictions yeah. so it was Judgment Day who yep. were at the time the champions versus Awesome Awesome Truth versus DIY versus a new day versus new catch republic versus a town down under i was completely in shock that a town down under was given the one set of titles i honestly would have thought that that would have been the new catch republic mm -hmm. but the fact that after getting the title seeing grayson waller going through a ladder yes. yeah it, it even broke they yeah to get a different one yep. yeah they had to get another one because he literally yeah it it the not only sparkle. broke his fall it broke it broke him yeah him. and we've seen that many times in a lot of matches yes oh yeah but waller oh that one Manic. was that was one that looked one of the most brutal like ladder spots i've ever mm -hmm. seen and it came pretty close for seeing like the raw teams. Like one of my favorite moments was the awesome truth and DIY. And truth is like, wait, 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 hang on. There's two titles. We can both be champs. Mm -hmm. it w I was like, somebody who actually had the brain power to do that. And it was our truth, but our, he's hysterical. <laughs> He wants the hot tag. He's, yeah. he's pinning the yeah. guy in the middle of the ring. Tag. Yeah. He, and he, they were like, truth, what the hell are you it's doing? It's like, <laughs> what? It, if you want to see someone break everyone else in a match, truth. Truth, truth will actually yeah. break anyone. Yes. And I got to say, like, it was an amazing spot. Mm -hmm. The fact that JD McDonough got involved in the match and went through the table. Yeah. He, oh, he needed to. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Like, the spots in that match. Like, that ladder match was another highlight match. Yeah. So, I mean, the fact that now it's the awesome truth is the Raw champions and the tag champions for SmackDown. Is A-Town. Is, yeah. uh, is A-Town mm -hmm. down under. I'm like. Good. Which they keep hinting that that team is going to split because Waller keeps going and running his mouth. And then getting theory into shit that theory is not ready for. Yeah. So it's like, really? They're both extremely talented. Yeah. But, you know, Waller's better on the, with the mic because, let's just be honest, even though at a previous WrestleMania, Austin Theory beat John Cena, Cena called it. It's like this match is not – it's like there is no winning and losing. It's only losing for Austin Theory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like you beat Cena. You got you beat a guy that's a part-timer. Yeah, you beat a part-timer. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, it's like if he lost, he lost to a 16-time a mm -hmm. world heavyweight champion. It even would have been yeah. – it might have worked in his favor to lose to Cena. Yeah. But the fact is – and Cena even ripped into him where it was like – they got to pump in crowd noise yeah. because his matches it's he's talented, but they're not, they weren't using him right. right. Yeah. I think they're starting to figure out how to use him and letting him be a little more funny, but it's one of those things where it's just like, I just didn't see that one right. coming at least not for them being the ones. Yeah. So now match number three, which one was that one again? Was that? I, believe I don't have these in any order. I think it was, think what was it, Uso? Yeah. Ver Jimmy J. Yeah, Uso versus Uso. Yeah. I had Jimmy going over, even though J won. I had J won. That match, very flat. Well, see, 
we said that one was going to be more of the bathroom that break. That, break. That was my bathroom break. Yeah. But, See, I mean, how do it we was guess? Just, yeah. It was just like, you know, super kick, super kick, you know, and. Uh, but that's. But, yeah, that's the, but the thing was, and I have to give them at least some credit for that match. They were able to still play on everyone's emotions. Oh, yeah. They because played. when he apolo when you've got Jimmy apologizing. Trying to play. It's like he's in. trying to play on all the emotions and then still hitting his brother. Yep. You know, like they were able to play with the emotions. There were better brother versus brother matches, Owen, but this Brett. one, yes, this one was still a good match. It was not. It wasn't the best match. No, not by far. But I mean, I I would still put it above Matt versus Jeff. Yes, but there, I don't even remember that match. Like, why don't. do you think I said put it above mm. that one? But then you still have because I mean, like. You figure Brett versus Owen? The I Quit match. Uh, oh, yeah. The, not the I Quit, the uh, throw in the towel match. Yeah. So, I mean. No, the, wait. No, 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 no. no, 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 no that no. wasn't that one. The first one who was, was the, WrestleMania 10 with the two of them. Right. Yeah. But who did Brett fight in the That was Survivor the Series. I think it was in Bulldog. And Bob Backlund. Oh, Backlund? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and Owen and talked to his mother into throwing in the towel. towel. Yeah. I do like that little Wayne got to bring down Jimmy U. Yeah. Main event, Jay. Main event, Jay Uso. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, I mean, that was the thing. The entrances were a spectacle and something really... At least it wasn't a 20-mile yeah. race. Yeah, well, you know, the longer those yeah. ramps, the do like the longer the event takes. Yeah, because you yeah. take 20 minutes to get to the freaking ring. I think night two had the best one with somebody going down in the golf cart. That was a step. Well, yeah. That was funny. We'll, 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 we'll get to that we'll one. That yeah. 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 And then you figure, what was it? The fourth match of the night was the Intercontinental Championship match. I am so happy that Sammy won. Sammy Zayn yeah. deserved to win. because and He the, was like, he was basically the Rocky of that yes. match. Yeah. And who was his who was his Apollo? Gunta. Nope. Who was his Apollo? <laughs> who, Sammy's? Yeah. You, Chad not, Gable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because at, before he walks out, he goes, When this is over, you owe, you owe me, me a, a favor. favor. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know. And the thing is, it's like it was worth it. Yes. They told one hell of an emotional mm -hmm. roller coaster of a story. And the match was phenomenal. Yeah, Sammy really plays on everyone's emotions and being the ultimate underdog. Yep, he knows how to pull the match out. Yes, both yeah. of them made that story, made that match worth watching and staying e in. and even gunther came out of that yeah. not looking weak like right. he yeah. put everything out he, there leaving it to the point where it's either he goes for a rematch or it's time to step up and move into move the main the event division, which yeah. is next yeah but i'll tell you no but i'll tell you this because i've watched him through progress i watched him through defiant who sammy or gunther gunther because everybody knows sammy through ring of honor mm-hmm but the thing is that Gunther, the way he he is now, when he was Walter Gun, Gunther, he's trimmed his body down and everything. It's because he was leaving matches exhausted. He could he was sleeping after like right after match, and he couldn't sleep at night. Now he's trimmed down. He's going full blast as he always has. Well, because now and he actually figured out the cardio element yeah. to give himself the stamina that he's needed. I mean, he's done, if you've watched in the past with him, when he first came over with NXT, when he faced uh, Pete Dunne for the NXT UK title at Barclays, he had the stamina, he had the moves. Well, let's not, let's not moves. go too in-depth into the background on this yeah. one because it's like he's got, we could do that for all of the guys yeah. and it would yeah. and, and then, we, then we sure. instead of an sure, entertainment podcast, we become a nothing but WrestleMania, WrestleMania. podcast. So, I mean, but. now the thing was, it's like both the guys came out of that one with it's a left. Like yeah. yeah, it's like both guys look strong, which I wish they would book that more often mm -hmm. rather than surprise roll-ups and distractions yeah. and interferences so like this was like a match that it's like you were really on the edge of your seat i didn't think i mean yeah there was not one time when i when that match was on that i kind of looked away got a snack at soda whatever i was like okay i'm watching this bell to bell yeah, yeah. now what next next match, match. The, was the women's match i believe so 
Okay, so that would be Jade Cargill making her WrestleMania appear yeah. first time Bianca appearance Bianca with Bianca, Bianca and, and, Naomi and Naomi versus Damage, Damage Control. Control. Yeah, well, they did it right. Both you had Bianca and Naomi, Naomi working the mm-hmm. match because this way they could get her in and everything. Cargill still needs, she still yeah, she but still needs to right work. Thing. She needs to like basically get polished up and used to fighting more matches than just, oh, here's a handful of matches for the course of a year. This isn't UFC. You don't like no. fight one match and then disappear for like six months and then come back mm-hmm. and but fight another match. match. Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah, but if you watched her in the beginning when she first came out with AEW. Yeah. Okay, she came out, first match, you're like, oh, this person needs a lot of work. Yeah. And then, but every match after that, oh, she got better. Yeah, she because better. she, she is a, fun, listen, she's a phenomenal athlete, and having her with Naomi and Bianca Belair, those two are consummate professionals, mm-hmm. pull her and over. they're the ones that are going to make sure that she doesn't just look good, that, that she, she is, is good. good, and she just elevates up and up and that's what we want to see is more is like and she will win the belt and yeah. her her pin is just absolutely amazing yeah yep. and the physical dominance is like it it's absolutely extraordinary to see what kind of an athletic performer she is mm-hmm. it's just a matter of and we all know it it's it's going to take time to learn the wwe style right. of wrestling and get used to that knowing her spots and feeling more comfortable Mm -hmm. because she's got a presence it's just a matter of all right you got to be more comfortable wrestling more times in a year Mm -hmm. and yeah but they left them off those like damage control was not on a winning streak that this wrestlemania but the story they told it was well deserved yeah they needed to have their comeuppance because they threw themselves into upheaval by pushing Bailey out. Yeah. yeah. So it's like th- that story was just one that you were like, you saw it needed to happen. Mm-hmm. Now, next match. Was the Luchador match. Yep. Rey yep. Mysterio and Dragon Lee versus Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. Which but, was not the actual no, match because. They threw Dragon Lee in the last minute. They, no, no, no. no, no. no. They, replaced they replaced him with, with Andrade. Andrade. Right. So Andrade came in. We didn't have this match fully logged in yeah. when we were making our predictions. So when we were making our predictions, like the same with the women's match, mm-hmm. we knew th- we knew it was going to be the Kabuki Warriors probably taking on Bianca and Naomi. We didn't know Jade and Dakota would be right. involved in it as well. So this one, I honestly thought it was going to just be Dominic versus Ray. Round four. Yeah. Yeah. Or And it ended up where it was like it was made, where it was Dominic and Santos versus mm-hmm. Ray and Dragon Lee, which would have been a great match. Yeah. But they made sure, oh, he got blindsided, and they replaced him last minute with Andrade. Yeah, and then you had the freaking uh, Taylor Swift's boyfriend come out of the freaking no, crowd. No, 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 no. no, no. no. That, that was, wasn't Kelsey? That was Jason Kelsey, not Travis. That was the brother. And Lane oh. Johnson. Whatever. Both of them played for the Eagles. Yeah, you know. Very it, large luchadors. I, remember, yeah. even Michael Cole was getting confused as to which Kelsey it I was. Know. So He had to be corrected. Yeah, it, but that's but the still, thing. I mean, there was so yeah. much going on in that match. Yeah, that one I was like, yeah. Because you had a, on ringside Legato Del Fantasma mm-hmm. and the LWO. Right. And... I honestly kept thinking there was going to be a turn by Carlito. Mm. Yeah. And well, he didn't even do anything. No, no. but. Didn't even spit the apple. The thing was, seeing him the night before on SmackDown, he gave the impression like he was, he thought he should have been the one put in. Right. Yeah. So we'll see how that one plays out. If with, it plays out. No, I, the think I think they are because it seems like they're getting more into long-term storytelling. Yeah, but mm-hmm. Carlito. Carlito came back, and one of the things he said he was gonna, he wanted to do was he pretty much put his ego aside, and it was he wanted to help raise up the other talent. This was more him coming in just to help everyone else. Yeah, yeah I mean, if they decide to use him the right way, yeah, man, cool. I could see them just saying, "Okay, we're gonna do something different." Yeah. And thanks. I honestly thought though Dominic was gonna at least get like 
a little bit of the better of his dad. Mm -hmm. And him and Santos, they got wrecked. Yep. So I was wrong on that front. I will admit that one. That one, it's like, for the most part, I had a lot of them called right down the middle. I had Ray going over all summer. Yeah, you had Ray. I thought it was going to be Dom's time. So it was a bad night for Judgment Day outside of Rhea. Yeah. And then... What was it? The final match of the, the night? The main event. The, yes. the over hour long yeah. match. 50 yeah. minutes. Yeah. And most of it was just them getting to the ring. Yeah. You figure Roman and The Rock taking on Cody and Seth. Yep. To, to determine night two if it was going to be bloodline rules or not. Mm-hmm. It was weird because when, when they were making their entrances, I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, this is my bathroom time. So I run upstairs. I go to the bathroom. Yeah. I come back down. Lynn's like, it didn't even start yet. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> you didn't need to run. I didn't. I was like, you I was like are you fucking upstairs. kidding me? Yeah, no. I went and I was trying to like watch it. But I was like, I had other things going on. And then it was like, I had to basically take a break and then watch it recapped again. Yep. Because of the fact I had to get home. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the match was long enough for yeah. a drive that really was like oh geez Mm -hmm. but no so that match though they went all over the place yeah and i have to say the rock they peacock really missed out on their censorship Mm -hmm. hearing the rock curse Curse. he dropped the f-bomb right on the ref four or five times yeah but don't fucking count i'm the boss you don't fucking yeah, yeah it, but then they'll, they'll they'll beep him after he says it. Yeah, they yeah. got him after the fact, which was just ridiculous. So oh, they got fired that night. Yeah, I'm like, the problem is it was just that like you're not going to be able to censor the rock. No, you're not. But no. it's like everybody else gets censored. Yeah, he but, doesn't. Yeah, well, you know, when you're on the board of directors. Yeah, yeah. but still, you can't be pra- trying to pass off a show. As yeah, I know. PG. Yeah, as PG. And then when you're the boss dropping F bombs left and right. Yeah. Not only that, you figure he's do- he was making sure there was blood involved in the story and everything. Not just for the bloodline, but yeah, you know they wanted they, they kind of wanted to go um away from the PG, not going where they were with the attitude era, but yeah. I'm thinking they want to lean more towards ruthless aggression. Yeah. Yeah. Which would be fine. Except for the fact that it's like you're still censoring everyone else. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You, so, you, you either censor everybody or you censor no one. Yeah, you can't be. You can't do it like that. But that match went all over the place. Mm-hmm. Rock going up to Cody's mom with the belt yep. and her like yelling at the Rock mm-hmm. was it was it was beautiful. Yeah, and that outcome, I honestly thought that they were gonna give it a clean fight for night two. So I, I was wrong on that I front. I second guessed. I was like, "All right, they're gonna go one on one, make it clean." But I'm like, you know what? No, I, I, I after had I left it. here, I'm like, you know what? They need to make it. They need. Well, to make we were it remember we also recorded two weeks before WrestleMania, exactly. so not everything was set. Right, but I had Cody and Seth losing. I actually yeah. thought yeah. Um, Seth would have turned on Cody. Oh, uh, see, I didn't think there was going to... And that would have cost them night one. See, I didn't see the turn because it was like... Well, nobody turned. No. no. But the thing was, it was like Rock being the one to pin Cody. Mm-hmm. That, I thought they were going to let Roman pin him night one. And then... And night two. get pinned. Yeah. No, they, but they let they gave it to the Rock. Boss, yeah. Right. Yeah, the final boss that disappears right now. So... Yeah, right. Um, okay, and he said it. <laughs> yeah. And now... But before we go into night one, two... What was your reaction that they now, it is now known as the age of Levesque? Listen, they're going to try and get this over, and you can call it whatever you want, Mm -hmm. but it's only going to be time that's going to determine what the era is. Because unfortunately, you can also say this is the TKO sports era, because it's no longer under a McMahon's control. Although I was kind of shocked when Stephanie came out. Yeah, I see, was actually pleased, to and that see was that. for night two. Yeah. yeah, and I do like the new opening that they had, where it's the star. Everybody's in the stars. Uh, they used to have it with the rolling the mm-hmm. reel. Yeah, and listen, and how they've had to edit that how many different times? Well, listen, they made it easy to edit people out of that one. Yes. <laughs> so I mean, it's one of those things where it's like the era now is changed. Listen, the times changing, and that like you can call it whatever you want, but. Everything changed. WrestleMania was the first night, 
of a real major change mm -hmm. because bloodline now changing over it's like we're gonna see where things go and the long-term storytelling they've been doing has actually been paying off yep so and now night two opening match we had drew versus seth yes i was like again shocked at the opening like that but once the bell rang and you see McIntyre fly out of the corner. Oh, yeah. Hit him with the Claymore. And then you throw roll him open. I'm like, oh, right there, one, two, three. Yeah. It, I was thinking it was squash. like a Sheamus Daniel Bryan. Yes. Yeah. But the, they went all out on that match as well. Yeah. And you figure Seth took a beating and a half. The like, night before. Yeah. He took from I the night before. Be a little bit yeah. more in. Mm -hmm. But I called that ending. I just didn't see the interference from Punk. Yes. Yeah. It, it was. It was nice to see Drew McIntyre yeah. going over too. He. Won I knew he was going to win, mm -hmm. but I knew he wasn't keeping that belt. So I thought that would. I didn't. I didn't. I thought the Money in the Bank cash in would have been at the end of the Cody match. No. no. That's why no. I no. thought they would have screwed him. No. And see, they would have had a cash in like that. No. See, they had set up so much with Damian Priest and Drew McIntyre. Over the past year of those two not getting along, especially with war with the war games match, yeah. it really broke down to he he drew screwed over the like the cash ins a number of times. Yeah, so it was like it was only justified. It was I see this is where I kind of don't like when they do stuff like this. The two men McIntyre and Rollins hell of a match. They yep. left it all out there. And then and listen, it, I, I feel it cheapened listen, it a little. No, bit. It, no, because you know what? I feel it cheapened it a no, little. No, because it's been done every in the past. It's been done just how it was done there. But not only that. Look, Drew got to have his moment winning in front of an a live audience, yes. not in some warehouse with monitors showing people's faces for five minutes and yeah. forty six seconds. He got to win, and he got to even let his wife hold the belt, mm -hmm. and then. He wanted to push his luck by going after CM Punk. He ran his mouth so much. And it's like, I want a picture of this. Mm -hmm. And standing on the table. I, I like when, that was I like when Punk said, like when oh, yeah. McIntyre was saying to Punk, you know, this isn't about you. And Punk's like, then stop talking to me. Yeah. And, he, yeah. and he's like, I, you know, I can't hear you, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like he keeps going and he keeps going. He, and he really called the good. I liked him doing, doing comedy. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he called it. A great match was called, and he did make them. He made them relevant mm -hmm. because then the second after it was like, okay, my arm's messed up. You can't do anything to me. So we knew Punk wasn't going to take a hit, but Punk taking off the brace, the brace and cracking and him cracking him with his other hand. Oh yeah, hit him a few times, and then send your money in the bank comes out, mm -hmm. and the place blows up. Damian Priest deserved it. Yeah. He held on to that money in the bank contract for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to see both world championships in the hands of the Judgment Day, it's worth it. Because you know what? Think about it. They went, they tried so hard to go and have Seth constantly taking on um, Finn. Right. Yeah. So Balor and him, they keep going back and forth. And it was like Damien couldn't do anything because it's like, I'm not going to screw him over. And he kept feeling like he was going to screw Finn right. over. Yeah. And he didn't. And, and it was Drew that it's like Drew kept pissing him off. So Drew deserved to Reed get screwed. And told him, you'll get your shot. You'll know when to call it. Yeah. And she did it right. Right there. Yeah, but she didn't know he was go he was waiting on that moment. Hey. So he waited for the perfect opportunity. Let's face it, out of all the Money in the Bank contracts, the majority of them have won their titles. There's only been a very small handful that did not win. Three. Yeah. One of them was Cena, who won the match, but didn't win the title. Mm -hmm. And that was against, what was it, Punk? Mm-hmm. Punk yeah, or? yeah, it was punk, and then it was Damian Sandow cash in and did not win. He got pinned against yeah Cena. Yeah, so and then Braun Strowman, it was a no contest in Hell in the South. Yeah, so having like at least like you can prove that in the past there's not a guaranteed success. Right. 
you know, Drew could have walked out of that one and the contract was wasted. It would have been a huge downfall for I mean, the it, Judgment Day. Yeah, it would have been a wasted shot. But yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, now, let's move on to the next match. Uh, again, these are out of order. So let's yeah. just... Let's let's save the titles for the, the end. Of course. Yeah. So let's well, do, not all the titles because no, not all titles. Let, let's let's well, do because the the there was like three back to yeah. back. Yeah. Let's do L.A. Knight versus AJ Styles. Yeah. Yes. I had I had L.A. Knight going over. Nah. And you Tell also the called guy, the bathroom break too. Yeah, I called this one the bathroom break because going into it, I really didn't know any of the story going on. But watching the match, I was like, I'm not leaving. I want to see how this one goes. AJ. Put yep. this man. I mean, not yep. that he needed much to be put over because from watching it, LA Knight holds his own, but it just putting on a match like that with AJ Styles doing all the moves that they're that both yeah. these men are capable of doing. AJ didn't need to win. Well, he has enough accolades, yeah, yeah. But, but not, not it, only it helped push up, not, Knight. but not only that, the thing is, LA Knight has been earning this. Yes. Yeah. And the story, they've done a great job at recapping the story before all of the matches. Uh, it was a lot of yeah. recapping. That's why it's like six hours long. Yeah. It's, now you understand. Yeah. The, well, you know what? It's at least good it wasn't one night because if Thank it would have been Christ. one night... It'd still be going on. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. It, oh, no. They would have all uh, frozen on night no, one. Yeah. Like, we're, <laughs> going, we're going home. Screw it. Yeah. People in the scrum would have... People in yeah. the scrum would be like... I think we, I I think we all pretty... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we all called LA Knight for this yeah. one. Yeah. So, now, the so far, like, the over-under, it's like... I called the, the majority of these. I know Jimmy was kind of, like, back and forth between mm -hmm. some of them. You, even. you went and you were kind of, like... You, so you, I, I went some. I mean, I thought Becky was going over. Yeah. I had uh, Jimmy going over. I ha I called that Seth and Cody would lose night one. Yeah. I had Sammy going over. Uh, I had Drew going over. But didn't see Damien coming down. Yeah, I saw that I, one I a mile away. Coming. The only I thought it was Drew was going to be so beaten up. I didn't think that it was going to be Punk that was the one. Yeah, that, I didn't see no, Punk no, interfering at all. Yeah. I, no, I kind of see that because it's a, how Punk. If you remember how he oh, yeah. cashed in the first time, who helped him? Batista. Yeah, but also so I kind of see all, but, all that. A lot of. But time. also, you figure McIntyre was kind of asking for it oh, yeah. with when the T-shirts and everything. Out, yeah, too long too. Yes. Yeah, he 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 played around. He played with fire and got burned. Yeah. So now the next match. Let's the, do the Bobby Philly. Lashley and the Street Profits versus the Final Testament. Yeah. Philly Street Fight, sponsored by. Gin and Juice. Oh, yeah. The special fact that it was sponsored by Gin and Juice was hilarious. The special mm. guest announcer was Snoop, Snoop Dogg. Dogg. Paul he, Famer. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. that He made, he helped make that match enjoyable. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah. they bring out picnic tables? The thing, <laughs> listen. Oh, you know, you know, Grandma, they're going to bring your picnic yeah. table, Grandma. Listen, the, the Final Testament needed to lose yeah. because they were given so much during every... Every SmackDown, they kept getting oh, like they kept right. getting the one up, the one up. It was about time for them to lose. And let's face it, it's like go back to the drawing board and fix your logo, right? Yes, because I'm even calling them half the time the final judgment because it looks terrible. Mm -hmm. It is, it's they have a good group, but just uh, logo sucks. I never yeah. realized this was Paul Ellering's first WrestleMania too, which was impressive. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the authors of pain were taken out very quickly yeah. in that match. And, and Bubba Ray. <laughs> Bubba when he put the glasses. the glasses on. Bubba being the the but special I don't, I don't guest referee. I didn't know what was going to happen. No, I didn't no. see that one no, at we all. Know, we didn't even see. We that didn't even coming. know that was going to be a full be match. Then again, Good. he was going. It's Philly, and that's his. Yeah. You yeah. Down. You somebody. It was either him or you get Tommy Dreamer. Yeah, but I don't think Dreamer was going. to... Bubba Ray walks yeah. down the street. Yeah. People fucking throw cheesesteaks at him. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing too. Well, the busted open, man. Listen, he want the thing was that entire match was insane. The only thing I can say was I called that the Street Profits would win yeah. at WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I had that too. Yeah. I called I the, the Street okay. Profits if it was in the the mm -hmm. tag title match, but they didn't make it in. Yeah. 
but seeing this one, mm -hmm. the spots were amazing. When the two women went through the table. You oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, they damn, the lady go through the table. Other. Oh, yeah. You know, taking wow. the, Scarlet getting taken out by B-Fab. Yeah. It was one of those moments at where it was like, you know what? Payment was due. The and last almost yeah. freaking didn't work when they were no, ready the to first one it. didn't work. The first one, oh broke. yeah, they put them on it and it just snapped. Well, that <laughs> that was like the ladder match where one of the ladders, Damien went to climb the ladder and, and it, it and it broke on yeah. while he was trying to climb <laughs> yeah. it. So it was like certain things were already getting destroyed in mm -hmm. advance. Oh, they got more picnic tables. Oh, I was like, damn. why do they have so many goddamn kendo sticks? Yeah. I know. Yeah. They cracked, they, they shattered it over Lashley's <laughs> You got to give, you, you, they made the authors of pain look really strong yes. yeah. by destroying that, the kendo stick alone, mm -hmm. going down to shots. nothing but the handle. Right. That right. wasn't just two shots. That was a lot of shots, but they kept breaking. They mm -hmm. kept breaking. Yeah, they that I and I have a kendo stick. Yeah. Those things are solid. Mm -hmm. To see that shattered like that, that's intense wear and tear or the power of a shot. Both. And yeah. that was it's the kid yeah. when you're in Singapore how it felt. When you're hitting something as solid as Bobby Lashley. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah that yeah. helps too breaking it. Oh yeah. So they really went nuts on that one yeah. and it was like Get the it's like the slap to get, get the, the table, tables. get the table, <laughs> the what's up. It was out nice there and he's like, back. Montez yeah. Ford though, jumping over the the corner. Yes. He jumps over the turnbuckles. thought he was gonna land in their laps at home regime. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he he if that would have been if they would have been airing that in three D, oh, you would have been thinking it was literally gonna he hit you in the face. <laughs> Like Montez Ford is a phenomenal yeah. athlete. The both of oh yeah, Dawkins. him and Dawkins, they're both great. But Ford will do some crazier yeah. shit. Mm -hmm. And ever since teaming him up with Lashley, it was a great combination. Yep. So it was a great win. I, it, we didn't have that match fully locked in, but the Street Profits coming but, out on yeah. top was push, definitely it was a good yeah push match. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do the U.S. title. Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens versus Randy Orton. The prime crap match. I'm sorry, you know, I was I had Kevin Owens the whole time. I had yeah. Kevin Owens. And Kevin too. Owens. I think I even had RKO. Yeah. You had RKO. We both wanted Kevin Owens. Paul should not have that title. And the fact that it takes going and having w another guy from Prime's I was shit. Yeah. Who the hell was yeah. in the bottle? Yeah, it wasn't KSI. KSI's already taken an mm -hmm. RKO. So it's like, here's another guy. I will say I liked how long Randy and Kevin worked together. Yes. They they went so long with working together and then Rant, and th no, it, rant, it was like let's keep going. We'll do, we'll right. worry about each other later. And Randy just goes right back to the Viper, uh -huh. and it was like really like. Well, I liked in the beginning when they both were beating the crap out. Right in the very beginning yeah. of the match, we're both yeah. beating the crap out of Logan Paul, and they both go for the pin, and they look at each other, and he was like, "Okay, okay, let's just beat him up some more." He goes, "Okay, let's do yeah. that." <laughs> yeah, yeah. The best you have Logan Paul coming out in like in a six wheel truck. <laughs> blowing up the uh, shooting the WrestleMania sign with a prime bottle. A prime I'm, bottle. I'm sorry. Th this is one thing no, I have not to shot. He's tank. Yeah. God damn it. No. Yeah. See, my thing is that, and this is my biggest pet peeve of the entirety of WrestleMania was the advertisements yes. because, okay, you want to have a match where it's sponsored by gin and juice. It wasn't everywhere. Every corner. I use dude wipes. Yeah. But, I didn't need to see it on the corner, every corner. every corner, the prime bottles being left in the fucking corner on a oh, damn wait, cart. Wait, by the way, the logo you did call it. Yeah. In the freaking ring. Yeah. I said corner. the one in the center of the Man, ring was terrible. Not for nothing. It, it should have been C4 because C4 was a bigger sponsor. Yeah. Not him. But he wants to be the sponsor. It was like you had Snickers. There were so many sponsors. It feels like you're watching a boxing match or a UFC fight mm -hmm. with the amount. Yeah. It doesn't, dis they're not distinguishable anymore. 
wrestling was always their logos. Maybe you had a few in the background or the match was sponsored by at the beginning. Yeah. Right, they mention it. it again towards the end. But this was too many goddamn sponsorships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I get it. Ch the corporate models changed, but it was too much sponsorship. The prime match showed... And I'm going to call it the prime match because Logan coming out w on a truck with a giant prime bottle sitting on it like if it was riding on a rocket of prime. Like, well, they it did tastes that with, like crap. I did yeah. that with Stone Cold. Yeah. I'm trying to run off that. Yeah, but Stone Cold at least was a monster truck. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't, hey, we're going to put a fake cannon on top so we can hit the pyros. It was a fake cannon. It was... I would have preferred them with the old like monster truck with Randy Savage's hat on mm -hmm. it yep. with the glasses. Like that would have at least been something better. Like you're giving Paul a guy who hasn't done this long enough and hasn't earned. He's extremely talented but he had, in he the hasn't ring. Earned, he still he hasn't, hasn't paid his dues. No. Yet. He's like I said, he's like the second coming of who? The Miz. That's mm -hmm. what they're trying to book him as. The thing is, though... But he's not The Miz. No, he's not The Miz. No, he never will. The thing is, The Miz can at least sell an entire match. Yeah. Yes. Paul, how many times does he disappear in his own matches? Yeah. yeah. It's uh, He doesn't have the stamina for a no. full match. And that's the thing. His matches are short. It's almost like an Ultimate Warrior match. Yeah. Run out to the ring, shake the ropes, do a couple moves, and the match is over. Goldberg, you come out, you spit fire, you spear, you jackknife, you yeah. pin, you back before the crowd knows what the hell happened. And the yeah. problem is, he's not good enough for it. Yeah. So it's it's a joke as far as I'm concerned. Kevin Owens should have walked he away should've. with the title. At least one of them, yeah. No, Kevin, it, that, Kevin was Kevin Owens. that was Stephen Owens. That was Owens. Randy didn't need it. Randy doesn't need the belts no, anymore. No, you should have. Then you, then you would have. Because before, when Kevin walked out, yeah, Sammy was Sammy there, was and there, it's like, like it's your mine, night. Go get yours. Yeah, and it, that would have been perfect together. Exactly. Yeah. Seeing the two of them, where previous WrestleMania, mm -hmm. they win the undisputed tag team titles together. Mm -hmm. Now they go off and they and get their mid card it titles. Been there, it would have been their Benoit and Guerrero moment. Pretty much. And that's the thing. It's like they. It felt like that one was cheaped out. Yeah. Although it was funny seeing them come down in a golf. You see Logan Paul come out in a huge six wheel truck. Yeah. And then you have Kevin Owen coming out <laughs> with a, uh, on a on a golf cart, and you know they just took like a box of like Krispy Kreme or something, and just wrote Kevin Kevin Owen and duct taped it right. Oh no! Car. But not yeah. only that, with the golf cart, you knew there was going to be more to it because you saw the handles yeah, were already then, set up. And then when he coming down with Randy, it, Randy, Randy leans down and goes, "Slow down, slow down." Yeah, because yeah, he was going like too fast. Smackdown. Yeah, they were in the golf cart. Yeah. So, but that was the thing. It was at least there. Now let's go and let's Bailey, do Bailey versus Eo Sky. Sky. Now that match was a banger. Yeah. Yes, that match. I was amazed Amazing. that Damage Control did not try to get involved in that. No, Me they, too. they only one appeared on at the top yeah. during Eo's entrance, and that was it. Which is the way she, uh, a championship match. No interference. Even if you're yeah. a heel, no interference. No, no, no. There, there can be You'll interference, that but that's right. the thing. Sometimes it gets a baby face over more, but Bailey didn't need it. No, she didn't need it. Because that's the thing. Bailey, this is the first time Bailey's been like a crowd favorite yep. in a while. She's a hugger. Uh, well, she's not going back to the hugger, no, thank I'm God. Hugger. She, she, got new mu she got new music. Mm -hmm. You and see how she came out? Oh, yeah. She came out as a as a pharaoh. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she was dominant in that match. She took a beating, though, too. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, you felt like she earned it. She did earn it. She and all, all the crap that she'd been through, getting kicked out of damage control, having them speak Japanese in front of her, and then she just claps back speaking Japanese, and they're like, oh, shit, you know what we're saying. Yeah. It's like, oh, you didn't think I would pick up on what you're saying? Yeah. It's like, there is Google Translate, people. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, well, I mean... That was... Bailey taking the title, yes. like I think we all had that. Yeah, the, we, all, we all picked Bailey. Yeah, the thing, the funniest thing is, it was like the majority of titles changed hands, except for the U.S. The US, US title, title. Mm -hmm. and Rhea. 
the women's yeah. world yeah. title. Women's world, I think, yeah. Like, th- those were the only two titles that really that didn't change hands. Basically. We had uh, seven title matches total between the two nights, and only, yeah. two of them cha- only two of them retained. Yeah. And now let's go on to our main event. Main event. Cody's entrance. Mm. Him coming out as... Pretty much, it was almost a copy of Triple H, I think, I was like, but was more like skull-like. It was, it was like a knockoff Triple H match. I'm like, what is he wearing? But Brandy showing up right next to him and taking yep. the helmet was amazing. Mm-hmm. And seeing Brandy Rhodes there, his his mom, his sister, it father was like, mo- yeah, his father-in-law. Yeah, he had, nights. yeah, mm-hmm. that they were ringside. It was worth it. Yep. It and, was, and, by the way, and it was his an, brother was in the shadows. Yeah. yeah. And Ricky Starks was also an attendant. Yep. Yeah. So there was a lot of one, like, there was a lot of great moments in that match. There was. Roman's entrance, seeing like that, like the singers mm-hmm. just the, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Them cool. give, giving him like that live feeling. Right. It was. It was a cool moment. It was, it was cool. And. It just was the match was a, a, another long one. It was, it was, it was long, but it didn't it. feel like it was that no, long. No, the, the and it not, was definitely shorter than the other main event. Night one, night one was felt felt, felt it, like oh my yeah. god, pin. Yeah, but it was like one, it just kept going. It was like we're just gonna keep abusing everyone. This one, it felt it, it was long, but it didn't feel long. Yeah. Now the interference that took place, it was one after another. Yeah. And it started with Jimmy, then Jay. See, now, if Jimmy and Jay showed that type of um, stamina, stamina, or even that type aggression. of emotion, no, that type of emotion in their match, it would have been so much better. It would have been, but they still did pull out a good amount of emotion they, they in their did, match. If, you're, you're, I, I think you're a little overly critical on yeah. their match because let's face it, the brothers' matches are always a little more difficult. When you have a brother versus a brother, they're rough because let's face it, family's gonna fight. Hey, I'll fight my brother right now. I don't care, and you, you'll see the emotion. Yes, and the difference is your brother will still have all ten of his fingers. No, when I'm done. <laughs> So, but the thing is, it's like family's fighting or it's going to be emotional. They didn't get it out enough, Mm -hmm. but because the rest of the family was involved with the bloodline, it felt like that, the interference there Mm -hmm. of Jay coming down to stop his brother and then throwing him off Off the the ramp ramp through, what was that? Like a couple tables and like covered. Oh yeah. Starting right there, I was like, okay, this is how they screw Cody over. Because then I, I saw, I didn't, honestly, I, who else did you think would have come to Cody's defense? I actually thought like Seth would be out there. I thought it would also be maybe Sammy. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I was n- like solo then coming out. I did not expect Cena. No, I, didn't see, I didn't see Cena. I didn't see the Undertaker coming out. No. Cena coming out was something. Then The Rock taking out Cena. Cena. And then... You hear the Shield music. Yeah. yeah. And I really thought... I really, really thought you would Am- see... Ambrose. Ambrose and Rollins coming. You almost thought. I thought they that. did it... Yeah. It's like, you're looking, you're looking this way... And, and he came, right from, yeah, he came from hell? behind. Well, that's where Roman was looking because he knew where they were coming out. Yeah. He's like, okay, this is the best angle. When we did it, we'd come out this way. This is the best angle. So well, Rock, is, Rock was looking, but the problem was he came the other way. And, and he got, cr- and, but then when he, when it did, Rollins got cracked with the Superman punch. Oh, yeah. He got cracked with the Superman punch. He was taken out of commission. Mm-hmm. He was already hurt. The yeah. fact that he was able to make it down after his match with Drew at the beginning yes. of the night. And even from a match from the night before, yeah. the man even was able to give that kind of match with Drew from the with, night before. Within 24 hours, right. he took such a beating mm-hmm. that I didn't think he was making it into that final match, okay. but he made it in. He was only there for seconds. Doesn't matter, though. And then the lights go out. Oh, oh yes. You know what? Did not expect you to take it to show up. I didn't expect like, it. I know he's retired, but that one moment, yep. I was you're off like my. I was out of out. my seat. It's you're like we, you're the I, final boss. Out. Yeah, that really is the final boss. Yeah. But yeah, it's like. Yeah. But this is still my yard, you son of a yeah, bitch. Yeah, it's like you want to be the final boss. 
I've I'm never the given ultimate yeah, boss. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm the secret hidden boss. Right. Boom, Boom. Took mm-hmm. him down and left it. Lights go out. The lights come back on. He's gone. And the next thing you know, it's, it's just the two of them back yeah. in the ring again. And just the hat trick yeah. of Crossroads. Mm-hmm. The last one, you see how yeah. much aggression he put into that. It was, you felt the emotion, not just in the ring of everyone coming down from after the one, two, three from Cody. And Samantha, what he calls oh, yeah. emotional. Oh, mm-hmm. she was so choked she was up. She, she could yeah. barely get out the, yeah. the winner. But. At the top of the ramp, you saw later on, because there, the cameras weren't close enough, but there were some cameras that were there that saw Roman, like, emotionally hugging Paul Heyman. Yeah. yeah. Like, you saw, like, this was the end of an era. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, you figure, three years, he had that title. And defended it less than everybody else who like had that title. Time. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean... He tied and then broke Hogan's record for WrestleManias, Mm -hmm. and that's only because WrestleMania is broken up into two nights. Yeah. Yeah. It it, it should be... No. But if it's WrestleMania, it's one event. Fine, two nights, but it's still one event. It's still called WrestleMania. But Cody winning was the start of a new chapter. Yeah. And it was well-deserved. He fought through all all of everything mm-hmm. to get there and it felt not only deserved but it felt so much gratitude i think everybody from kind of, everyone i think everybody just kind of like after he won everybody was like great he won but everybody also kind of breathed a, a, a sigh of relief saying thank god they didn't fuck him over not yeah, only yeah. that but also it was like finally roman is done that too because yeah. He's not fighting every week. Mm-hmm. We know his health issues. Yeah. He said it, you know, they made it and during the press conference on night one, asking him about the fact, because they've been screwing up a lot lately yeah. with the things they were saying, because Roman never said in his documentary that he was going to retire if he lost the title. Mm-hmm. And then they went and it's like, he has leuke- he, his leukemia is acting. It's like, he has cancer. He has leukemia. But he's on medication that's letting him keep going and keeping it at bay. So he's in remission. Right. It's not like he it ever went fully away. Mm-hmm. So they made it seem like he still is like battling it, like where it was ramping up right. again. Yeah, no. And that was like a huge mistake saying that. So it was like he put it into the proper perspective. Anyone who's dealing with any illness does not want to have to deal with that, where that becomes the main focus. And Roman's, not, I can fully understand Roman not wanting that to be all he's seen as. Right. But the fact that it was like, they're making it out to be like, oh, he steps aside. It's because, you know, it's, he's going to say his leukemia is back. No. It's like, it's the, the thing was. Every fucking year. But yes. when he stepped away. After winning the title and then having to step down, he was not liked when he won that title, Mm -hmm. but the sympathy he got from everyone. Right. And when he came back, people still felt the sympathy for him. Yeah. So to me, it was just like, don't feel sorry for the guy. Be happy he's back Mm -hmm. and he's healthy. Right. But if you're feeling bad for him and he's getting the title because you feel bad for him no that doesn't make any sense to me right it's like that doesn't that's not a deserving champ no i give him a lot of credit because he's proven he can take the ball and run with it and he's done an amazing job Mm -hmm. but it's time to let someone else have it you can't keep telling the same story over and over again of roman screwing somebody else over because the bloodline gets involved it just eventually the story old. It, yeah. yeah, it was already old. It was, it was old, old two and a half years yeah. ago. It yeah. w- it should have been done last WrestleMania, mm-hmm. yeah. and it was like, nope, we're gonna drag this out one more year. Like why? It was just they to make sure he made them over them. a thousand days. <sighs> it, like yeah, he had, like what was it, thirteen hundred and something days something as like champ? That. Hey, listen, but he still didn't beat Hogan, Backlund, and San Martino. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the funniest, well, to, to beat those guys, it's like you'd have to have oh, the Sabatino, title. You know, you got to have the title for a long time. You got to have the title, but never relinquish it while you're still yeah. like you're not wrestling. 
so but the thing is it really was one of those things where it's like he had over 1300 days gunther lost the title after a record 666 days which is kind of funny yeah that's crazy <laughs> he lost it i looked at that i'm like oh <laughs> shit that's devilish yeah is he from helsinki <laughs> <laughs> listen it it was one hell of a night but like i said that both like, nights were good yeah the but, hall of fame was amazing both nights were good night two was better yeah. in my opinion yeah but i will i do have to say like i said my biggest criticism out of everything i'm a little less on the brothers match than you are but it really breaks down to not so many goddamn advertisement yeah. spots everywhere yeah. you do it for a commercial break fine you want to have it where you've got the banners in the background or along the ringside fine but the fact that it's like it's in the center of the ring it's on the back of the ring post yeah it's, it's literally, uh, yeah, it's everywhere on top of saying, oh, this match is sponsored by mm -hmm. gin and juice. Fine with that was funny. It's like, here's a new, here's the next white claw. Yeah. But it, yeah. this was just like the prime bottles being everywhere. Stop advertising prime. It's not good enough. It doesn't like deserve said, it. No offense. You, you're advertising prime, but prime yeah. is not your major sponsor c4 was yeah listen i don't snickers and the w listen if we were offered a sponsorship by prime i wouldn't even accept it because i wouldn't take an advertisement for something i won't use exactly and i wouldn't drink prime i wouldn't pour prime on my boss if he was on fire so that should tell no, you you might catch him more on fire <laughs> You I would gasoline on them? that I would no, do. I think that's what it is. Brian. No, no, I would gasoline, but this is like now. Now I do want to hit one more thing before we wrap up the show because I want to talk Fallout. Yes. yes. Fallout aired, and I didn't. I thought they were gonna go week to week. They dropped it two days early on the tenth, mm -hmm. and it was supposed to come out on the twelfth. Comes out, and they actually dropped the full season. Yeah. Well, that's prime for you. New yeah. The time. Now, I've never played the game. Have you guys played the game? No. Nope. Okay. So I didn't know anything really about it. I knew I've seen little things, and I've seen like images of like the soldiers. I've seen like the vault boy thing and stuff. Yeah. But I did not know anything about it. And we're only going to talk about episode one because it was a long episode, like an hour and a half. An hour yeah. Fifteen. Yeah. It was a long episode. And I think everyone was watching it on the premiere night. Yeah. So it kept glitchy. Yeah. yeah. It, there was a lot like of glitching glitch. going I on. I, I had a watched problem. it the night, the night after, the uh, morning after. I yeah. had a and problem when I was watching it last night. The um, it wasn't synced up with the sound. Oh, see, I had to stop and restart it again. Mine, it crapped out and then had to restart, and it was just That's like it didn't go, it didn't fully restart, but it did roll back, mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah. oh, come on. It, it's like that kind of ruined the enjoyment of it a little bit, but the effects were cool. I like what they were doing. The costumes looked amazing. Yep. Yeah. Walter Goggins is in everything nowadays. Yes, yeah. He is. And I'm like, he's like the, he is the Amazon Thank Prime you, golden boy. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, let's face it. He's Cecil in Invincible. Yep. yep. And now it's like, here he is. Not he starts off as a cowboy. Next, he's introduced as the ghoul. The ghoul. Now I know nothing I, about this history. Just going by what I saw yesterday, because I just knew it was a video game. Yeah. Um, opening up, you see everything getting nuked. I'm like, okay, maybe they'll lead into that, give some backstory. How they just went from that to like the vault city, to um, like the marines or whatever they're called, the knights, the knights, nice. and then going to the ghoul. I was like, okay. It kept my interest. I like it. I'll watch another few episodes, see if they give me a little bit more of a backstory. Uh, I probably have to go online and read something. Yeah. Figure out who dropped the bombs what, and what's going on. Yeah, but, what I did was I went I went on YouTube and I looked up for to see like what the story of it is. And there's plenty of people giving you like an overall timeline. Right. There's some long videos because there's the history yeah, behind it and like stuff. Four or five video games yeah. out there. And the yeah. one the one review I've seen of this that I have to say is probably what I would assume would be the most accurate is when it, 
it's they go off the main storyline and go off on a side tan like a side quest that's where the game shines and that's where the show shines mm -hmm. that's the review that i've seen we're going to talk more about it like the on our next episode because i don't think we can just encapsulate after no. one episode no but your first opinion mike what's the fir your first overall opinion of episode one i enjoyed it i liked it um not knowing the backstory from the game i was a little confused like again who was dropping the bombs how did the cowboy become the ghoul you know yeah um just kind of wondering what's going on who were the raiders in uh that attacked the vault city all yep. that i'll give it another few episodes i mean i didn't not like it i liked it i was if they in the next few episodes if they give kind of like backstory who does what and why they're going on well you know it's going to take some time yeah. to get not even two episodes will give you a backstory right, I'll, you know no, they're going to drag it more than yeah. that but you know i'll i'll give it a shot um you know so far it it I was able to sit through the first one without falling asleep. So let's see what the second one yeah. can do for me. Jimmy? I enjoyed it. Meeting the three protagonists. Yep. Meeting the three, getting the three different stories. Very, very intriguing, interesting and everything. Yeah. Seeing where it starts with the cowboy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And this kid, he's like, Daddy, um, it's yeah, is it my thumb my or thumb? yours. Yeah. Well, I will tell you the one thing that I do know is that it's not taking place where it starts in where like everything seems old timey and like the the 50s 60s yeah. it seems about like that because it you seems like that but that's an aesthetic it actually yeah. takes place further into the future so that because they have robots oh yeah they have this is too before the bombs drop yeah before the bombs okay. drop there are robots with the vault tech and everything so from what i looked up this does not it's not like oh no this is where they thought in when they were building the stuff it was going to look like because in the 50s 60s that's what they thought the future would be yeah see i thought it was yeah. in the beginning i thought it was like cold war era yeah, yeah no no this is like too, this because is of the bomb shelter right it, and he tells him get the hell get out no out like here. from my understanding like the backstory involves like a war over oil okay like and i'm talking like globally and Alaska is like supposedly like one of the last places that you could still get oil. Like, so it's one of those situations where, you know, it's fighting over oil. So go figure. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we can all kind of relate to that one. Yep. Mm. But yeah. So, and I do want to just touch on one thing before. I don't know if you guys watched the latest episode of X-Men. Yes. Yep. Okay. I did. Yep. So now overall opinion because we're going to say i'm going to say spoiler right now yep because we're going to we got to talk about genosha mm -hmm. yep. now i you know i'm dropping this one in last minute because none of you were prepared i didn't let you guys know about I, the no, x-men I, 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 I watched i knew, I knew, knew you guys about. were going to watch it that's knew, the thing I, in the promo video i said we're talking about this oh yeah, yeah. we're talking about it but it wasn't going to be a main focus right. topic but the genosha episode alone holy shit it's yeah, it was like I've seen reactions from people online that are completely devastated. Well, you yeah. know, you are we doing spoilers? The, I said spoilers. Okay, the, you saw Cable, you saw him. Yep. You saw it slide back. You know, Gambit's not dead. You know that he, they're going to go back and fix it. They can try, but I don't think they're going to get rid of every one of the everything that happened. This is one of those moments where I don't know if you saw it or not. It was a blink and you miss it moment. In the sky, mm -hmm. you saw Uatu the Watcher. I must have blinked. Yeah, it was like very quick and you had the Watcher. You see his face in the sky. When? During the Battle of Genosha, like watching like everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. It was like tying in it's to not, the overall more, bigger universe. Okay. What I basically saw out of this was... It was the hell. It was almost like the Hellfire Ball, which they've been doing in the comics the past couple of years, which has been like it's the Met Gala. This is the Hellfire Gala. Yeah. All right. But they did at it in Genosha. But the funny thing was, the second one. This is what happened. There was a lot of fighting, and everything, and it also 
with the fallen mutants and the Morlocks and yeah. trying to protect but them. But not only that, you also have to remember, too, we got that little side thing of like that documentary they're filming w of the X-Men mm -hmm. and Scott is cheating on Gene with, with Madeline, Madeline, which isn't really cheating because he has a kid with Madeline. Madeline Pryor is, is his it, first wife. Or is it Gene? Yeah. They don't yeah. know. Yeah, they don't need Gene and Madeline don't even know who's real and who's not. Exactly. So it's Gene's like, yeah, getting mm -hmm. getting all upset, but seeing Gene kiss Wolverine. Yep. Oh, was that Madeline? No, that was that was Gene. Right. So that was Gene kissing Wolverine, and Wolverine. Like, Whoa, it's like he wants it, but at the same time, he, he's not going to do that. It's like I'm not going to be that guy. Right. You're in a vulnerable spot. So it's like, I'm the mistake that happens. I'm not Scott. Right. So, I mean, they've given Cyclops where every movie made him out to be like he was this cardboard cutout. And this time he's getting such depth. Yep. And letting him see that emotion of like the process of him not knowing what's happened to his child, even though Madeline got to see Cable yep. and saw it when like had the realization of our son's alive. Mm-hmm. And, but Gambit getting skewered after Magneto was pr basically like taken down. Yeah, and then and he, he just charges up the awesome. entire Sentinel. That was awesome. Yes. It's like, if I'm going, I'm, I'm taking, taking you with me. I'm, what he was like, house wins, won't I mean? Oh, yeah. And that's the thing. Like, Gambit, it like you saw like Rogue was in a tight spot on that one. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of people that are in an emotional uproar from this because people love rogue yeah, they yeah. love gambit there are people that love magneto yeah and like seeing like you're gonna take out an omega level threat of magneto you're gonna even take out sebastian shaw and the white queen yep well no i don't think yeah, yeah no, they, 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 oh yeah. lying on the ground yeah not yeah. sure if they didn't say they were dead or not yeah i saw them lying so on the we'll ground. S we're gonna see what happens you know yeah, but i don't know where they're going with this oh yeah. yeah when you watch the original uh cartoon you kind of can like piece together where they were going from like current comics. Yeah, but with this one, I yeah. want to find out where the hell they're going. Because yeah, because there's been so much history right. since the '90s mm -hmm. with the cartoon show and the comics. Right. Yeah. So this this is one that we're definitely going to all be keeping our eyes on. Mm -hmm. And if anyone would like to join in on the discussion and let us know your thoughts, please feel free to email us at dragoonslayerpodcast at gmail.com. That's dragoonslayerpodcast, all one word, dragoon is spelled with two O's. That's dragoonslayerpodcast at gmail.com. I had not shilled all no, episode. I'm, and I'm proud of you. No, my listen, my allergies have been like really bad. I'm amazed I can even talk now because... Thank God we didn't record last week. I had no voice. Like, it w like I sounded like complete and total garbage. And it was all because of the allergies. Yeah. And, like, I'm willing to suffer the allergies for no snow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hear you. I, 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 will, I will put up with that. I like snow. I like snow, but I don't like having a shovel. Yeah. And I don't like falling on my ankle and breaking uh, it. Yankle? Is my yankle. Ankle. What the hell is a yankle? yankle. My ankle and yeah. breaking it. My yankle. Oh, he had fell on his yankle. Is that your? Is like your? Is that like your uncle? Yeah, basically. <laughs> yankle, uncle. He falls on his yankle. <laughs> but after he got circumcised. Oi! I'm feeling a little verklempt. Talk I'll, amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. <laughs> Let's get some Michigan guts out of here. Yeah. All right. So, Mike, want to yep. give everybody the socials on how they can get in touch with us? All right. You can hit up the Dragoon Slayer Podcast on Instagram at the Dragoon Slayer Podcast. Oddly enough. Also, you can follow us on Facebook on hmm, Dragoon Slayer Podcast. And what is the Gmail again, Danny? Oh, that would be Dragoon Slayer Podcast at gmail.com. That's Dragoon Slayer Podcast. Dragoon is spelled with two O's. It's all one word. Dragoon Slayer Podcast at gmail.com. And that's how you can find the Dragoon Slayer Podcast. If you want to follow me, you can I don't know me. why. I don't know why, but hey, it <laughs> happens. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Hamster Pella Productions. You can follow my Facebook page on Hamster Pellet Productions on Facebook and Michael Chiavo on Instagram on um, Facebook. Thank you. Uh, are you sure? No. But Is that your final answer? It's. Been... Would you like to phone a friend? Yes, I would. Actually. And Jimmy, how can they get you in touch with you? You can find me on Snapchat, James S I zero nine two five. 
all lowercase, Snapchat, uh, Instagram, and Threads, James H underscore the fourth, Facebook, James Haynes the fourth, and TikTok, James0925. Thank you and have a blessed day. Yeah. Now, if you want to follow me, which I don't understand, I'm not, I'm act, I have not been pretty active on social media really other than to promote the show mm. but if you'd like to find out anything you can find me at blue dragoon 13 on tiktok on instagram on threads and on twitch even though i have really i he don't really twitch. stream but he i do twitch, have though. He has yeah but i don't have the but i do have the link on the twitch page for the discord group that you can yeah, join and discord. become part of the community and also, I mean, that's pretty much it. Like, anywhere else you can find me, it's Blue Dragoon 13. And if you find me anywhere else, please let me know, because... Um, Fake account. Yeah, I don't know why anyone would want to be me, but... Hey. Hey. But then again, you know... People have weird taste. I, listen, I, ha I have my moments where, you know, people. I have a blessed life, and then I have moments where it's like... And then there's every other moment of the day. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. So and then he wakes up. Yeah. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Remember, you can listen to us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcast, along with YouTube, Blue Dragoon 13 channel, where you can watch the episodes on YouTube or listen to us on all other platforms. Remember to like, share, subscribe, recommend this to a friend because Sharing is caring. And with that being said, you don't have to go home, but you can't, can't stay, stay here. here. Now get out. Bye-bye.